Northumbria University um, with his project Finding a Balance. So I'll hand over to you, Harrison. Thank you. Um, yes, hi everyone. Um, so my project is um, is all about looking at a, a community settlement on the remote island of Ulva on the west coast of Scotland. Um, so it all started with some of my re research into uh, looking at some of the disappearing communities across Scotland. Uh, many of these due to uh, the kind of clearances and um, and many have been more recent and due to kind of a lack of em employment opportunities or a lack of uh, kind of good quality housing, things like that. So um, through my research, I mean, the, the key issue was that many of these kind of thriving communities, as, as they're lost, we, we're losing kind of a wealth of different traditions and skills and a kind of a, a way of life. Um, and there's a, a lot of social history and a really rich history across a lot of these settlements that um, is in danger of being lost. Um, so I focused on the Isle of Ulva, uh, which has a really interesting history um, and has once had a really thriving community of kind of 16 townships uh, towards a thousand residents on the island. Um, but it's down to kind of less than 10 now. It's recently had a successful community buyout as well. So it's a real appetite for people to return to the island. Um, so this project was looking at how can um, you develop a community on the island that will be sustainable. Uh, so next slide, please. So I did a lot of research into uh, kind of what what's required really for a sustainable uh, community in a location such as Ulva, uh, very remote and um, I looked at a number of the islands and, and remote areas on Scotland that are kind of doing really well and looked at kind of why they were doing well and, and looked at why all the kind of why people had started to leave. And I think ultimately it came to um, the idea of developing a kind of community woodland and social enterprise that's comprised of three key components, um, a, a primary industry. So this would be a... Um, a kind of primary business that the islands can kind of be known for and would provide employment opportunities and be a real uh, kind of opportunity for people coming back to the island as well as um, aiding to kind of rehouse the island and create homes for the island. Um, a skills and craft development centres, so this would be to support that primary industry but also to um, kind of provide a, a platform for skill and knowledge sharing um, for people who are arriving to the island. It's a very different way of life for a lot of people that arrive on the island. So teaching them kind of how to to live and kind of in such a remote, un unique kind of setting. Um, and then a, a wider sort of community driven master plan uh, with some key social ambitions, including kind of uh, providing those employment opportunities, um, developing a kind of more local trade economy. So it's really about empowering the people of Ulva um, to be more independent and to um, kind of be more self-sufficient. Uh, so decreasing the reliance on kind of the, the need for imported goods, um, as well as preventing the loss of that history um, and, and tradition. And next slide, please. So this is the kind of eastern side of Ulva, and this is looking at the, the main um, kind of community woodland space on the island. So there's a, there's a really diverse woodland on the island currently, um, which has been traditionally used as a key resource kind of throughout its history. So on this kind of slide, you can see the, those three kind of key aspects of this community that I'm proposing kind of so that I've talked about previously. So uh, the, the ferry town at the kind of top right, so that's uh, sort of re rejuvenating the old sort of town to, to become a kind of new social centre for the island. Um, the primary industry down at the bottom left, so that role is all about balancing the use of kind of local materials, using those local resources um, to fabricate kind of sustainable off-grid homes that are really suitable for this sort of environment and to other remote communities as well. Um, and then the Woodland School uh, kind of in the, the middle left. So the, the kind of 
developing this this um, platform for for knowledge and skill sharing that would support the community woodland um, and more research and it was the wood school then that I've kind of focused in on in more detail as uh, so the next slide please so when I was thinking about the wood school I kind of did some more research into both the traditional skills and kind of crafts that were found on on Ulva and the west coast in general um, as well as looking at some more kind of modern construction research into um, using primarily the timber from the woodland, from the local woodland. Um, so this is where the idea of this kind of finding a balance came from. So th this kind of principle then flowed through all scales of the project about kind of finding this balance between uh, a traditional way of thinking, uh, traditional kind of attitudes, but combining that with uh, more modern kind of innovations and research and, and with the kind of skills and abilities that we have now. So um, it was looking at some of the traditional um, crafts and, and how they use local research resources. Um, they worked kind of within the capabilities of those local materials, really kind of made them work hard. Um, and then looking at how that can be combined and kind of improved upon today using kind of modern technologies, things like parametric design and, and other um, sort of like creating complex geometries out of out of simple components. Uh, next slide, please. So that led to, to three key objectives um, for the for the Wood School kind of. Um, so in terms of the the accommodation, so it was it was training and teaching facilities for new residents to the island to provide them with necessary skills to live in this kind of off grid environment. Um, and to really help the, the wider master plan reach those sustainable aims and ambitions. Uh, teach traditional skills and crafts to, to prevent their kind of loss um, and kind of embrace those local resources on the island. But then as well, um, providing a lot of res research space uh, to kind of look at how we can use these materials in really interesting ways. So kind of large open spaces for kind of one to one prototypes and things like that. Uh, but ultimately, it's about this kind of holistic view that ensures that uh, self-sufficiency is is key to the community and decreasing that reliance on imported goods. There's the next slide, please. Um, so then the other kind of key principles in terms of the design of the building was about, again, using local resources was, was kind of key. So demonstrating the value of sustainable land management um, through managing the, the local woodman, woodland um, and then utilizing those materials um, and as much of those materials as possible to kind of, you know, with the tree, it's utilizing the, the entire tree um, and really embracing the natural properties um, of those resources. Um, and, and the building itself was designed as a prototype, really. So the building itself is designed to kind of showcase the value of, of these local materials. Um, and it's designed to be a learning process um, as well. So next slide, please. Um, and then the final kind of key drivers and objectives really were from a sustainability point of view in terms of um, from a carbon kind of point of view, um, but also from a, a kind of ecosystem and, and really making this building building integrate into the, the local e ecosystem and demonstrate how um, yeah, the human kind of involvement in an ecosystem can actually be of great benefit. Um, so, but yeah, carbon was a really, really important part. And this kind of was enforced by, um, I've been doing my master's through the uh, the apprenticeship route. So this was you know, kind of some of the learning I had from work in terms of research I've been doing into, into embodied carbon and full life cycle analysis was then fed into this project. So really exploring how uh, using local materials in the kind of rawest form can really help reduce uh, the carbon footprint, everything from from travel and processing, but uh, looking at the end of the building's life as well and, and, and how it can either be adapted or reused. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, so this kind of section here, kind of through the building, you, you see the, the, the building split into two key kind of planes. You've got this kind of ground plane which is kind of very heavyweight um, and part of the ground it's it's 
using as much of the, the sort of local rock and things. The site is a very kind of rocky um, kind of terrain, so it's used like using that as much as possible and integrating uh, kind of pods within that environment. A, uh, and then the second part of the building is this kind of flowing grid shell canopy that sails over the top of the building. Um, so it was, it was really key that a lot of the, the spaces require clear open spans, um, but a lot of the local timbers were kind of unsuitable for those clear spans. They were good structurally, but just not, not big enough. Uh, so that's what kind of led to this grid shell roof was about using um, sort of parametric design and how you can um, use small pieces of timber to create these larger spans that are required. Uh, next slide, please. Harrison, you've had 10 minutes, so try and speed up for the last one. Yeah, no worries. Uh, so another thing I was really interested in looking at was kind of getting hands on with these materials just to kind of further explore how they might be, how these connections might work and um, understand these materials more in terms of tolerances and just, just working with the raw material. Um, and this become a, became, again, a kind of interesting balance between uh, using kind of traditional tools and skills, simple tools and skills with uh, more modern kind of rapid prototyping and things like that. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, so tech was kind of poor, uh, kind of uh, core to this project. So looking at the grid shell in detail in terms of how that might fit together, um, the kind of grid shell being tied back down to some of these existing rocks using kind of tree-like columns and then um, kind of internal pods, the, the internal spaces made from uh, rammed earth and, and local timber. Uh, next slide. Uh, so this is just the last slide. So this is just showing um, kind of internal view there with the showing the landscape kind of flowing underneath the canopy and this canopy being tied back down to some of these existing kind of rock. Um, and then the uh, external with the building sat within the landscape to kind of really become a part of that ecosystem. Um, but that's everything, thanks. Yeah. Any Great. questions? Thank you, Harrison. Uh, I'm going to open up to the judges. Lovely imagery, by the way. That illustration is beautiful of the, the site. No, oh, thanks. Yeah, it's a great set of drawings and images. Just on the um, the roof itself, I'm just trying to get a sense of the scale of it. I think some of the earlier slides maybe give that um, sense. And it is a you know, it's a big structure. I'm just wondering about the roof itself, and um, you, you maybe explained that the fact that it is a kit of parts and um, almost standardised components. So I imagine it's designed that you know, it evolve or it's built up over time, but likewise it can be adapted and parts taken down to suit events potentially or how the, the use evolves um, yeah. and I think the other thing is the the roof it, how it's used also you know it's a huge surface area um, is there much thought about how it can maybe work a bit harder or what is it giving back other than providing shelter? Yeah I think I think that's been one key thing with this project that I've uh, constantly kind of battled with is this mm. it's, it's, it is a big structure it's a big uh, it's a big roof and and the activities going on, on underneath you know it's um, but I think I think the the key thing was that it's really supposed to be a, um, a kind of expression of what what you can achieve with local timber and, and yeah. with prototyping. So um, this is kind of like the ultimate kind of this is what you can do with this timber. Um, but I think the whole process is designed that it's um, supposed to be flexible. So I think as as yeah. it's being built, if if things are uh, challenges arise, things like that. It's designed to be flexible in the fact sense that that can change, and you're kind of constantly learning from any mistakes on site or any kind of any anything that needs tweaking. It's constantly sort of feeding that back into the design process. Yeah, we could probably hand it over to a contractor now, and they could build it, given some of your details. Yeah, I think I spent a lot of time developing this sort of. The detail, uh, just yeah. because I think that was that was really core to the project was was really trying to understand these local materials as much as possible. I think um, there's a lot you can do with materials in in quite a raw format, uh, yeah. and the advantages of that from a carbon point of view, but also from a a, a community like this that's that's uh, quite remote. It's reducing bringing all that material in, reducing foundations down to a bare minimum, uh, things yeah. like that. Great.
Just just out of interest, um, Harrison, just on the the actual prototype that you made, what material did you use for the joining elements? Uh, so that was um, in the end, it was uh, plastic, so three D printed. Um, so that was uh, kind of an inter interesting kind of link to the using modern tools alongside kind of more simple, modest materials and and tools. But uh, I did a number of different prototypes using just all timber. Um, and at various scales, but I think it was just really important to to try and engage one one to one scale, just to really get a feel for the materials and how those things fit together. Um, yeah, yeah. No, I think I think it's a really lovely thing to do to actually test it. So I wonder, just on that particular point, and 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 maybe just thinking about the overall sustainability picture. I guess you know, as opposed to plastic, it'd be interesting maybe to explore um, what other options are available from a rapid prototype and perspective that you Absolutely, know that could be yeah. delivered in this location and and form that that same um give you that same performance if you like um, yeah absolutely I'd, I'd, I'd explored kind of recycled plastic printing um and and various things like that um i think that the connectors were always the one thing that i think would be need some assistance if you like from kind of off the island uh, but definitely it's something that i would like love to explore more yeah Mark, I can see you've got a question. Yeah, um, I think it's a fantastic, uh, it, you know, at the end of the day, it, it is what it is, and that's not a criticism. I think it's actually sometimes some things don't have to be all singing or dancing, something very simplistic can have a true sort of meaning in its own right. I think that's really good. Um, my question is, is um, from sort of cost perspective and actually, you know, how this could could transfer into, into the wider remit, um, you know, from my experience, in terms of when you're dealing with these types of structures, um, they are they are very costly, um, and you know, as ever, cost versus value from from my perspective always becomes a big balancing act. Um, and so, I guess how you would sort of quantify this in in the wider sort of remit of of if this, you could roll this out into, into a more of a mass production sort of side of things, you know, how would you sort of quantify this in context to a any other given type of, of roof structure? You know, um, yeah, I think. Um... I think this particular building, um, the, the way I've designed it, I wouldn't necessarily have seen this being replicated elsewhere on a on a large scale. I think it was it was really about um, this being a prototype in and of itself, really. And and I mean the role of this building is to support the primary industry, um, and the primary industry I think is where you'd be um, focusing on much more efficient means of of kind of mass producing um sort of designs um on a much more modest scale sort of housing things like that um and and really this building was all about being being a prototype really and just really exploring what can be achieved and if there are if there are ways of making it more efficient in terms of the construction um, and and feeding all that knowledge into the primary industry which would then focus on um on the sort of more mass produced modular systems. Um, but I think as well, I mean, I did, I did quite a lot of um, community woodlands in Scotland. There are, there's a lot of them and they, they get quite a lot of uh, funding and, and can do some quite interesting projects. Um, so I did quite a lot of work exploring some of those as well. And, and the sort of the opportunities of getting others involved as well. So universities involved and and I think this building I'd seen as being a real collaborative effort from from a range of different kind of groups uh, to get this thing to actually work and to sort of provide skills or funding for it. Yeah. And Thank we you. finish on a question from Natasha. We've got for the five minutes. Go for it, yeah. um, so um, I I just want to say yeah, uh, congratulations. I mean, I have a soft spot for for timber anyway, but um, I'm seeing a lot of um, uh, uh, what's the word inspiration from uh, places like the Centre for Alternative Technology, Hook Park, awesome. Western Burt, um, Woodland, um, um, Western Burt um, Arboretum, even. Um, and I I do think it's yeah, definitely where you've got a split. A split a space to like play and try stuff out you you know innovation is about finding out what doesn't work um yeah. <laughs> as much as it is about finding what does work so i think kind of responding to the like things such as the cost or how you would up 
upscale these kinds of things I think yeah having that space to to really play around and feel like actually I can just let my imagine imagination run wild and then maybe there will be a spark that can take something a bit further I, I found that really yeah I found that really um, interesting in your in your work so less of a question more of a <laughs> more of a sort of a statement but um did you find like inspiration for you did kind of nod when I when I mentioned a couple of those yeah and I know um, I know Kat really well and um yeah there, there's is that that was that sort of facility really was, was something that really inspired this project I think um there's a shame there aren't more of those um sort of sort of places so I think yeah definitely yeah I'm about to move on but does anybody else have another quick question fire I do, sorry, I'll make it quick. Um, <laughs> great project, I really love the illustrations and like how they tell the story and the narrative. I wanted to ask if you had more time, what other techniques would you like to, would you have liked to implement? I know you mentioned this earlier, I just you touched on it briefly, but yeah, that's my question. Yeah, I think um, I think what the probably the, the big thing I'd love to do is explore the the other parts of this master plan in more detail. I think um, the other elements other than this building. So um, looking at sort of the the primary industry, for example, and explore um, explore that, explore sort of what some of the prototypes might be in this in this that are produced in this building, and some of the research that might happen. Um, but just exploring the materials, I think, more as well and in, in, in 3D as well, just getting hands on and, and exploring what other materials there are on the island um, that could be could be utilised. Things like um, the kind of thatch reed and, and there's, there's a lot of opportunities. So, um, yeah. OK, Thank I'm going to wrap up. Thank you, Harrison. Thank you. Thank you everyone. Um,